more about this at the end of the video. This week in Obsidian, we're going to be talking all about metadata. Metadata improvements is next up on the official roadmap, but there is the Gem of the Year 2022 nominations that need to be done before January 15th. Best plugin, best theme, most helpful Discord member, most helpful forum member, most helpful community developer, and best canvas. For the normal people watching that don't know what metadata, YAML, or front matter is, it's the stuff at the top of the file, and inline metadata can be put inside of Obsidian, and what it basically is, is information attached to a file, kind of like a label. And you can see inside of this database, the label, tag, date, inline, is the start of the front matter metadata, and the information is the bit after the colons. But the inline front matter requires a plugin called DataView. For those unfamiliar, DataView is the go-to metadata plugin. And it's had a recent update to its documentation for DataView JS, which is JavaScript, very complicated stuff. Don't bother if you're a beginner. But DataView has loads of information on their help page about how you can add queries and essentially search for anything you want inside of your Obsidian Vault and make it look basically the way you want as well. You can see there are examples inside the help documentation that you can put into Obsidian. But the developer of DataView has recently announced sort of Data Core which is looking to replicate what DataView already does, but it focuses on, as you can see, two to 10 times better performance. So it's going to be, I assume, faster and better in different ways, adding some functionality to what DataView can already do. So new JavaScript API, which basically means all the JavaScript stuff that people do, uh, it's better. The what you see, what you get views allow you to edit the information inside the query. Very much like the make.md plugin we spoke about a couple of weeks ago, you can edit the results in a query. Functioning embeds allow you to put images and video embeds into the views of DataView. Live editing allows you to edit things such as the tasks and nuance rendering of the due dates and other things that you would do maybe in a task plugin you could do in this new data core plugin. And then we have section and block queries which allow you to be more specific about the queries you're looking for, mimicking those logseq roam type queries. This could mean plugins like database folder and projects could become redundant in the future, but until then, database folder had a recent update. Now, when you click in a table, you can use the arrow keys to move around, enter to change what's inside that cell, and then use tab to move along. So when you go into the cell, instead of single clicking with your mouse, you now need to double click then you can edit whatever you need on your keyboard. And then once you've added that information, instead of pushing enter to enter it into the cell, you have to push tab to enter it and then move across, which isn't that intuitive, but it works for me. The front matter title plugin allows you to use front matter to change the title, so change the view of the title of a file. The template is the information in the front matter that you're using, so you can name it what you want, and then change how the file looks in any of these locations. Explorer, graph, header, start, etc., etc. And when you go back to Obsidian, you can see this file is called thing, but it's not called thing, that's not the actual name, but it's what it's being changed to because of the title template I have in the file, metadata. I changed that to name. Now you can see it's changed to where the way it shows inside of Obsidian and it shows name. Now, if I don't want it to show name everywhere, I can go back to settings, turn it off. So let's take it off for the Explorer title, for the graph title and for the tabs. So now tab shows markdown formatting, which is the actual name of the file, not the name that I've put inside of the metadata of the file. Hopefully that makes sense. Now the make.md plugin got an update to its spaces and some other little bits. So when we're searching inside of make, you can see we've got like a, a page preview sort of thing inside of the search, which is nice. And that is its flow view. Then with spaces, we have an additional option, which is 
contexts. And this is basically a table, a database folder, or a data view query result, or anything like that. And it's showing the results inside of a context. You can then change the view table or card view. When you're in the card view, you can then toggle on flow and the flow is a signal to be able to edit or see the page information. You can then go into a list view, again, toggling on or off the flow, and then the flow view, which shows you everything inside of the file. Those unfamiliar with the flow terminology, it basically lets you see stuff. Now, when we go back to the table view, we can then group by and then any of the metadata options sort by, again, any of the metadata options, new filter, clear filter, and hide all fields. Fields being columns, but those columns are created from the metadata or front matter inside of the files that are inside of this context. And a context could be a tag or a folder. So it mimics the database folders you can see here, but when you click on the folder, you can add a tag, you can sync the fields, which is the metadata stuff, and you get all of the other options, just like the tag context or the folder context, and you can import data view fields, save all the fields, but that may change with data core when that comes out. We'll have to see what happens with that one. An additional button was added to add a new space, which is like a folder, but you can move things around like the star panel. So spaces are very customizable in the way that you can see your files and folders. And then when you go in, click any and any of those contexts, you can see in the right sidebar, it expands that file and it lets you see the backlinks, the context, the fields, so the metadata stuff all inside of there and you can edit the information on the file inside of this sidebar view but what I have experienced is that when you're in that view you can't add new metadata yet so maybe you need to do that in the file for it to show or somewhere else and you can see here it's showing the date that I had added in through the DB folder columns so you could use spaces with db folder or any of the other plugins that work with metadata but something i've noticed is when you have a context it adds a, a different type of file and it opens in access so that's just something to be aware of and then we have this this metadata menu i was going to review it last week and share some updates but it, pff, so much stuff uh, so, there are demo videos for you to have a look, I'll leave a link in the description, but you can see we've got a folder, and we've got files. And this file, this person file, is a file class, and it shows the properties, so the fields, i.e. file name and age, which I've added, and the file class is just a file with metadata and then the stuff in it, and the stuff, the file class fields, are fully customizable and editable. Nice little window here to help you through because there are so many options. And we've got age, and I want it to just accept a number. You can add commands and customize all of these things, but I'm going to save this field, then go to the file class settings. So this person file class file or page has these settings. So it maps the person with the tag. So if capital P person is a tag, it will be added to that file and you can see you can tag names so you can put any tag in there if you wanted like multiple tags for this file class so the person one file has the person tag and the person tag is the same as the person file class so the field data i.e the age is added to person one so I can now add that, and I'm going to add that at the end of the front matter. So I'm going to add age uh, 25, I can add or decrease that. So now age is added to the front matter of the person1 file, because the file class, so like the, the schema of person1, allows me to add the age. Now there are loads of other settings like add a field at section, a cursor in front matter, update, any of the front matter through the right click menu, which of course you can then add to something like commander or a quick add, and you can manage any of the fields. So it's like a, a quick access to any metadata. 
Now, this is where the updates come in. I've got a Kanban task file class, and because I've mapped it with a tag, anything tagged with Kanban task with those capitals will be true. So any file with hashtag Kanban task gets these file class fields. Now, these fields are specific to a canvas. I've added in status and project to three different files. You can see task one, two, three, and Inside the file class field, you've got a status, canvas group, and project, canvas group. And what this means is inside the file, you can see all the jargon, gobbledygook, that no one really needs to know other than the people that have got to debug it. But when you go to a canvas, the project one, project two, to do, work in progress, and done groups are now part of the settings. So the status and project will be mapped to the group that the file class has. So Kanban task gives it the file class settings. Now when you drag the file in, it will automatically add the status and project metadata in line metadata to the files. Now, this is just one example. You can update with links to groups in Canvas. So you could look for color groups, look for links of cards left, right, up, down, add any metadata due to a link, which is very powerful. For the jumper that I'm wearing now, I got it from the Obsidian Merch Store. It's the official Obsidian Merch if you do want to support the developers and the application in general. So have a look. I'll leave a link in the description below.